Okay, just for the record, I want to pay tribute, even though um, one of these people sticks in my throat, if you know what I mean, his name, uh, um, in terms of giving him praise, because I also think he has um, built on fear and hatred um, and doesn't represent the best of humankind. Um, but I need to give tribute for um, the Brexit him being a Brexit um, trim, tra trim tab, that is, the small rudder that moves a bigger rudder that moves the whole tanker. Sorry for the shaky film, this is done in a hurry, responding to a tweet. I decided to do a playlist of a celebration of 1st of January 2021. So three people's names need to be recorded. Nigel Farage, Dominic Cummings, who points out very accurately in his only major talk that I found on the internet, half an hour about why we chose to leave, or, or, or how that came about, leaving the EU. Dominic Cummings says that the educated people, they, um, they were anti-Farage. Not anti-particular policies, it wasn't articulated that way, it was anti-Farage. And I think that's sad that educated people can't, you, you know, become ad hominem opponents uh, rather than uh, can articulate particular policies. I just struggled the other day. I was hearing um, Nigel Farage interviewed uh, kindly by talk radio um, as if, you know, the sun shone, shone out of his, you know, what. Um, and he was saying things about migration, all of which seemed to make sense on the surface. You know, uh, comparing us to Australia about ships boats being turned back from Singapore, why can't we do the same and everything, quoting a figure of a billion pounds a week that um, migration, um, the present migration policy was costing us. I don't know whether it's true or not, but anyhow, I couldn't fault him from the knowledge that I had on anything he said. I just disliked the man and what I thought he was stirring, stirring up in the way of, in the way of hatred. So Dominic Cummings, I have no such objection to. I think it's a travesty how um, the Barnard Castle trip has been turned into a vilification of him. Um, I believe you need to give a lot of leeway to people who are doing major tasks of serving the nation at a time when we have a pandemic. Even if the net result is 65,000 more deaths than would normally have happened during the period. I do actually trust the integrity of Dominic Cummings. Yes, I said that. The integrity of Dominic Cummings. He has never shied away from naming his battles. Um, he's not a public figure generally. He's you know he's behind the scenes a little bit, but when he comes out, he names his. He he. I I believe that in relation to people he speaks to, he makes it clear where he stands, um, and doesn't play doesn't hide in a way. So, um, it was, I mean, the way in which I gained respect for Dominic Cummings was largely through the way he was played by Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch in the um, drama, um, a, a, a British coup, uh, not British coup, um, Brexit, an uncivil war or something, whatever it's called. Um, I've done a great post about this on additionalinfo.blogspot.com. Um, Maybe I'll put the link below directly to that so we can be talking on the same level. Because my problem is that people... OK, it's a generalisation. Apologies for the generalisation. My concern is that people will diss what I'm saying without having the same reference points. So how do we get a dialogue that has the same reference points? What have you seen that I need to see in order that we can have a dialogue about Dominic Cummings? And have you seen the Channel 4 drama that had Benedict Cumberbatch as Dominic Cummings? And if so, what is your critique? Do you not think that he did the best he could do in a democracy to sway a vote? And that although there was perhaps a bit of an overspend and all that, it was broadly within um, democratic terms. So let's come to the third person without whom there would be no Brexit. Now he's not a figure from the right, he's a figure from the left and he wasn't alive at the time of the referendum, but without Tony Benn, I don't think there would be a significant left vote for, for Brexit. And I need to add some films to this playlist about January the 1st, 2020, 
21 to um, thank um, Tony Benn for his role in advocating Brexit. Now, I wonder whether by being such a clear advocate of Brexit, you uh, are um, at odds with me and I've put myself at odds with people who would otherwise be allies. I hope not. I hope that we can have the kind of dialogue that you can see what journey I've made from green politics through localization to actually being persuaded at the time of the 2016 um, the 2016 referendum I voted to remain in the EU I didn't like the I didn't like how either side of the argument was being done one all about economic prosperity Amber Rudd did speak coherently and well but it was about economic prosperity it wasn't about the real uh, issues that matter in the world which is climate, um, well, <sighs> growing e ecological instability for the well-being of humankind, to put it broadly, and uh, the role of localization needed to address that. Um, what had been Green Party politics prior to 1991. Um, I have a big bee in my bonnet about where the Green Party went since 1991. Still technically a card-carrying member, but, and I voted in the um, elections locally. I even voted, uh, sorry, in the um, Green Party internal elections. Rupert Reid for the Lords. I have a lot of time for Rupert Reid and try to feed policy ideas through to him around Extinction Rebellion and working with the working class. Um, then, working classes. Um, then... I voted for Amelia Womack, who I've known as a deputy when I, um, when I was last at the Green Party conference and seems to have done a good job. And um, I can't remember his first name, but uh, Mr Ali I voted for as a uh, deputy speaker, I think. Um, Sean Berry and... Oh, where did Sean Berry and Jonathan Bartley as a, come in my, in my opinions? May have voted for reopen nominations. Oh wow, I've got it somewhere who I voted for. Anyhow, you might not be interested in the internal politics of the Green Party. It was fascinating listening into two of the hustings because unfortunately um, eco-socialism has got, has got a grip um, in a way that doesn't serve the party well. If, if the green, if green politics has just become an adjunct of the left and subservient in general elections to whatever the Labour Party wants to do. Well then, that all the more reason why I became an independent candidate speaking green politics and Brexit green politics. I'm dreaming of a green Brexit. And I'm celebrating Tony Benn and will do in following films. So, yeah, I just got wound up by a tweet. That's why I've recorded this film without even a tripod. Certainly not with a script. Maybe it would have been better with a script. But um, I've probably stirred up enough there. So um, let me know what I've stirred in you and whether that's positive or not. I mean, do we want a kind of politics that's just people provoking each other? Sometimes it's good to be pro provoked. I was basically challenged at the hustings. I'm going to have to put this link beneath on the 5th of December um, 2012, 2019. Why do I say 2012? 2019, you know, one of the questions was basically saying, what, and I thought it was saying it to me, what right do you have? to be sat on this panel, what have you done for the generation of Hastings and St Leonard's? Obviously the person hadn't done their research, didn't know what I'd put in, so uh, I gave a four minute blast and the chair, although we were normally speaking for one to two minutes, the chair didn't interrupt me, I think it was electrifying what I said. The my person who transcribed the um, hustings for me um, said that was the best bit, where I actually reacted out of anger but with such clarity that I had a right to be on that stage and to be standing as an independent candidate. Um, and I'm intrigued by those who would question the right of a, an independent candidate. It does seem odd on one level that someone who might only secure 1% of the vote gets a quarter of the talking time at Hustings. But at the same time, I represented a lot of things that weren't being represented there. And come the next... Come the revolution. No, come, come the next... Uh, uh, general election, I think it will become a lot clearer that I'm representing a lot of things and a lot of people who aren't voting. Um, and we'll talk about that more, but please put your four to ten point um, Hastings Citizen Manifesto in, or if you're not in, in, in Hastings, then put it under the hashtag 
grassroots manifestos and I will represent you. I hope Extinction Rebellion in Hastings and St Leonard's take this seriously and that the groundswell of dissatisfaction with how Extinction Rebellion is handling Black Lives Matters comes through in the individual um, in the individual manifestos. Um, I also hope the people in Hollington in particular voice their opinions on migration because I would like to see Extinction Rebellion in Hastings and Leonard spending a lot of time in Hollington talking about issues of migration and Black Lives Matters in a conversation that um, that is the opposite of polarisation in politics. So the other hashtag is beyond polarisation in politics. Unfortunately, Extinction Rebellion with uh, blocking of the press um, in London looks like they're going further down the road of polarisation in, in politics and I dearly love them to have a wing that didn't. I hoped it was going to be the Buddhist wing, but what I tried to say to the Buddhist wing wasn't published pu published on Facebook. It perhaps wasn't consistent enough with the main th um, Three Demands message. Um, so we need to um, work out where our forums are for understanding each other and deal with our differences more constructively because democracy really is at stake at present and social media is being used in a way that I think tears us apart rather than brings us together. So the Grassroots Manifesto is an invitation to meet someone with a very different view. It's like dating across the classes, across the political views. I'd like it to be used in that way beyond polarisation in politics. Thank you.